Hey everyone, welcome back to Pop Out Workshop. Today I'm adding this interlock kit. Now I have the portable generator that runs the whole house. And one of the requirements is that you have one of these interlock kits installed or if you have an actual transfer switch. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to add this today. Now I wanna make sure that you understand that when you have a whole house generator, you have to be very careful and have an interlock system like this because you do not want to accidentally turn on this breaker and still have your power on. You want to make sure that this main house breaker is turned off first before you turn on the breaker. And that's critical because if you're running a generator and you have no power and you accidentally leave the main breaker on, you're actually back feeding the electrical lines. And if you have a, a lineman that's working on the line, he actually could get electrocuted and that would be a really bad day. So having an interlock is something that you really need to have. Now, before we go further, I want to say this. If you're uncomfortable around electricity, don't do this. Hire an electrician. So please be careful when you're doing this type of work. And to begin with, before you do anything to this panel, go ahead and turn off this main breaker so that there's no power that's going to be feeding into this. Very, very important. You always want to be able to have safety first. And like I said, if you're uncomfortable, don't do it. Hire an electrician. But putting in one of these interlocks is actually a fairly easy process, but you only get one chance. If you drill the holes in the wrong place, well, you're out of luck and it's not going to work properly. Now, something else that's real important, you need to make sure you know exactly what type of panel that you have in your house. And you need to order this interlock kit for your specific panel. They're all a little bit different. Depending on the type of panel will determine what type of interlock kit that you need to purchase. So that's the first very important thing. Now, this is a square D, it's a home line uh, panel. So when I order this interlock kit, that's specifically what I had to order. In my situation on the breaker panel, the generator needs to be on this top right section, which meant when I put this generator in, I had to move a couple of breakers down to be able to make a room for this one because it can't go anyplace else. When you're ready to remove the panel, the first thing I want you to do is find the main breaker and turn that main breaker off. Now my breaker currently is on because I need the lights in the shop. But when you're ready to remove that panel, make sure that you find the main breaker and turn it off. Typically, you're gonna have six screws. You'll have two screws down at the bottom, and then you're gonna have two screws in the middle, and of course, you'll have two screws at the top. Please, when you take this panel cover off, take off the top screws last. You wanna go ahead and start with the middle, and the bottom screws first to be able to remove it. That's going to give you more control over the panel. So the first piece of advice, be very careful when you're removing this panel. Remove the bottom screws first and then remove the top screws. That will give you more control over the panel when you lift it off. You don't want to take a chance at all of having this cover fall inside of that panel. Now even with the breaker panel off, you still potentially could cause some damage to the wiring. So please keep that thought in mind when you first start removing this panel. I already identified exactly where the holes need to be. But what I want to show you is this plate is actually larger than what the instructions show. You'll notice that this plate is larger than the actual opening. That's not what the instructions showed. On the instructions, it shows that this plate is exactly the same size as that opening for the breakers. And clearly that is not the case. So you can't go strictly by this. You actually have to make sure that you align this plate properly before you drill those holes. Because if you don't, the holes get drilled wrong and then you have a, a interlock kit that will not work properly. Once I have the holes marked exactly where they need to be with the pencil, I want to take the punch and actually punch a little dimple right there in the center of that hole. This will keep the drill bit from wandering and make sure that the holes are drilled exactly where it needs to be. 
to drill the holes, you're going to need a 3 16 inch drill bit. The good thing about it, this kit provided the drill bit in this kit. And that's always a good thing. But I know some people won't have that. Now I'm drilling these holes with the backing. That way it has a minimal amount of tear out and I don't take a chance of damaging or bending this uh, cover at all. Once the holes are drilled, there's still going to be some little burrs left behind. So I'm taking just a little round file and cleaning off those burrs. Now on the back side, it may be a little bit worse with that metal sticking through. So I'm going to flip this over and then use a flat file just to get rid of those little burrs. I don't want any sharp edges at all left behind. You can clearly see that there are several little metal burrs that need to be filed down. But it only takes just a couple of seconds on each of the holes to be able to do that. Now it's time to be able to add the plate itself. Now it comes with three screws in the kit and they're going to fit in through the back side. To make it easier, I'll put the back plate on first and then I'll grab the top plate and go ahead and drop it in position. I'll add the nut on here and just loosely tighten it. It does not need to be tight at this point. This will give me the opportunity to properly align the other screws as I slip them through the holes and get it in position. Now that I have all three screws in position, the nuts are installed, I'm going to turn the panel up on its side and actually tighten all three screws. This will give me the opportunity to not only tighten the screws, but to ensure that I have the proper alignment on this base plate so that everything is going to work perfectly. It's time now to put the cover back onto the panel. And I do the same exact thing. I put the two screws into the top and then I put in the other four screws, the two middle and the two bottom ones. As always, I always put the screws in loose to begin with and then I come back and tighten them. The panel itself has a little bit of flexibility as far as the alignment. You can move this panel side to side and up and down to get these holes aligned properly. Once they're all aligned, as you can see here, I'm putting in the last screw and there's no alignment needed because it was already done. And I can just simply tighten that screw. From there, turn your breaker back on and you can test and see how everything is going to work. Okay, the inner link is now installed and you notice that cannot turn on. That cannot turn on at all with the main service on. So this would have to be turned off first, then you would raise this up, and then you can turn the generator on. So that is very important to be able to have in place. I have a little sticker I want to put right on there that came with the inner link. There we go. Plus I'm going to leave that sticker on there as well. You also have this caution sticker that I'm putting on here that clearly identifies that there is a generator on the panel. Well, thanks a lot for watching this short video on how to install this interlock kit. Remember, do not do anything that you feel uncomfortable with. If you're uncomfortable working with that panel, even with the breakers off and the power off to the house, hire an electrician. Safety is the most important thing. So please be safe and if nothing else, Considering this for entertainment only, I am not a licensed electrician.